Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. Without Larry, the Three Stooges would not have been the Three Stooges. You really need to pay attention to Larry uh, when he's just kind of off to the side making his faces and he's taking slaps in the face and getting the pies thrown in his face. Well, his real name was Louis Feinberg. And of course we know he was a comedian, but he was also an accomplished violinist and a boxer. How about that? I didn't know that. He was born October 5th, 1902, Philadelphia, PA. That's my hometown. He died January 24th, 1975, in LA. Just 73 years old. He was 5 foot 4 inches. And the cause of his death was a stroke. Now, the part of Philadelphia that he was born was 3rd and South Street. And he was born to a Russian Jewish family, uh, like I said, in 1902. Uh, his father was Joseph Feinberg, and he owned a watch repair and jewelry shop. Now, that area of Philadelphia has a number of jewelry shops jewelry uh, stores, jewelry shops, and it's called Jewelers Row. So that's pretty much where Larry was born. Just one real quick aside, um, Larry suffered a serious burn injury when he was a child with acid. His father used acid to, che to test jewelry for its gold content, and young Larry he mistook the acid for a beverage and he raised the bottle to his lips before he could drink any. His father knocked the bottle from his hand and it splashed the acid on Larry's forearm, causing a lot of damage. And that's actually where he and Halley started his violin lessons. It was helped to strengthen the muscles damaged in his forearm. And he really became an accomplished violinist. He went to some famous music conservatory in Europe. And unfortunately, World War I broke out. And that was the end of his uh, European violin career uh, later. And, and we are very thankful that he became one of the Three Stooges. Larry had his start in vaudeville, and he started uh, in vaudeville playing the violin, and uh, he met Shemp Howard and Ted Healy. Now, Ted Healy was actually the original founder of the Three Stooges, but I won't get into that. But Shemp Howard, Ted Healy, uh, they were performing on vaudeville, and you know later... As we all know, Shemp Howard and his brother, Mo Howard, and his other brother, Curly Howard, they started the Three Stooges with, under the leadership of this guy, Ted Healy. And uh, Curly actually was one of the, uh, or not Curly, I'm sorry, Larry, was one of the original three stooges and and what happened was uh shemp uh actually was part of the trio mo larry shemp and shemp left and then curly came into the three stooges and you know the rest is history until curly passed away and then uh shemp came back uh into the trio so let's talk about larry's hair that is one of the most recognizable features of the Three Stooges, of course, his hairdo. He was kind of bald on the top, but with lots of thick, bushy, curly red hair around the sides and towards his back. Mo called him Porcupine. That was his nickname. So this is how Larry finds uh, trademark bushy hair had its origin, according to rumor. Uh, with his first meeting with Ted Healy. 
Fine had just wet his hair in a basin, and it dried idly as they talked. Healy encouraged Fine to keep that zany hairstyle. On a 1973 interview on the Mike Douglas show, Mo Howard recounted, so Healy said, would you like to be one of the Stooges? He said this to Larry. And Larry said, yeah, sure, I would love that. Healy said, I'll give you 90 bucks a week. Larry said, great. So Healy then said, I'll give you an extra $10 a week if you throw that fiddle away. So I guess he didn't like his violin playing. So this is presumed to be a fictionalized account as Mo Howard was not present for at that moment in 1928. And, uh, you know, he went on to be one of the Three Stooges. And Ted Healy was out of the act. So in the early uh, Stooges era, Larry, his character, uh, did more reacting than acting. He stayed in the background. He kind of served as the voice of reason in contrast to the zany antics of Moe and Curly. He was a surrealistic foil, as he was called. And in the middle ground between Moe's gruffy, bossy voice and Curly's childish persona. Like the other Stooges, Larry was off and on the receiving end of Moe's abuse. As a matter of fact, the legend is that Larry got hit in the face so many times that he actually had a thick, thick callus on his face. And as I mentioned early, earlier, he was also a boxer. So, and he also took a lot of pies in the face too. <laughs> but pretty much, you know, the commentary was that Larry is the least distinctive character of the trio but he adds a pleasing touch by siding with either Mo or Curly, depending on the situation, thereby enabling him to show moments of lucidity as well as lunacy. So after Curly suffered a stroke in 1946 and Shemp replaced him in the act, uh, that is when Curly got more... Uh, yeah, his his on-screen presence was increased and he was you know not so much of a background figure when uh, Shemp came back in to the trio so in some of the earliest Stooge films uh, Larry's character every now and then would indulge in some nutty behavior you know a lively scene that was kind of perked up uh, you know with some unsuspected action from Larry like I don't know if you remember disorder in a the court there was a tense courtroom scene when suddenly Larry broke into uh, the scene with a wild Tarzan yell ah! I remember that sorry for that Tarzan yell not not too good but you know his uh, you know with any of these outbursts Mo would put him down very quickly and um, <laughs> put him down with a slap in the face. <laughs> and, and that's how he developed that callus on one side of his face from being slapped so, so many times by Mo. So, Larry, something about his personal life. They say he was a social butterfly. He liked a good time, surrounded himself with friends. Uh, his wife, uh, Mabel Hanny, was her name. He loved the party. And around Christmas, he served lavish midnight meals. Some of his friends called him a yes man since he was always so agreeable no matter what the circumstances. Larry's devil make air uh, personality carried into the world of finance. He really wasn't good with money. They say he had a gambling addiction. He gambled away all the money he had at race tracks. Uh, high stakes gin rummy and yeah he often gave money away too to actors and friends who needed it and he never asked to be paid How about that here's an interesting tidbit about Larry's wife Mabel she really didn't like housekeeping 
So Larry and his family lived in hotels. They didn't live in a normal home. And uh, they lived in Atlantic City a lot, the President Hotel. And that is where his daughter Phyllis was raised. Then they moved to the Knickerbocker Hotel in Hollywood. They did not own a house until the late 1940s. Unfortunately, May 30, 1967, his wife Mabel died of a heart attack at age 63. Uh, Larry was on the road and about to take stage. So it is said he immediately flew home to California, leaving the other two stooges on their own to perform. His wife's death came about six years after the death of their only son, John. He died in a car crash November 17th at the age of just 24. Their only daughter, Phyllis, died of cancer on April 3rd, 1989 at 60. So uh, he did not leave any heirs. Uh, so to speak. So in 1965, the downward spiral, spiral for Larry started. Mo was still around, and then the new Three Stooges, Joe Dorita, had started, and they called themselves the New Three Stooges. But at that time, uh, Larry was getting a little old for slapstick comedy. He started showing signs of mental impairment such as frequent trouble delivering his lines properly. And a few years later, uh, they were working on a project called Cook's Tour. It was a TV series. And January 9, 1970, Larry suffered a very bad stroke that paralyzed the left side of his body. And that pretty much marked the end of his performing career. So Larry eventually moved to the motion picture country house, an industry retirement community in Woodland Hills, California, where he spent the remaining years. He used a wheelchair uh, in the last five uh, years of his life, and he, he was in a paralyzed state. I remember uh, when I was uh, a, a young boy watching uh, Larry on uh, television after uh, they had a Three Stooges cartoon and Larry come, would come on and ask for donations. It was so sad because he had suffered a stroke and he had a lot of difficulty speaking. And it was just sad to see him in that state. Unfortunately, you know, the end of life is not a pleasant time. Uh, for for most of us but they say when larry was in uh the motion picture country house he tried to do whatever he could to entertain the other patients uh he completed an autobiography he called it the stroke of luck and he did receive a lot of visits from mo mo howard and he did find Larry Fine remain accessible to Stooge fans. He regularly hosted them despite his disability. When asking, when asked if spending his life as a Stooge was enjoyable, he would comment, "It wasn't fun. It was work. It was a lot, a lot of hard work, but it paid off good. So I enjoyed it." And like Curly Howard. Larry suffered several additional strokes before his death, January 24, 1975, at this nursing home uh, in California. And he was, uh, they say, interred. He was buried with his wife Mabel and son John in a crypt at Glendale's Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in the Freedom Mausoleum. Fellow stooge Joe Besser is interred in a grave a short distance from that mausoleum. And then Mo Howard died four months after Larry passed away. Well, that's a sad ending. We all have sad endings, but hey, boy, did they 
leave a legacy of comedy for all of us to enjoy for years and years to come. I mean, their their legacy is getting close to uh, 100 years. I think they started in the 30s. And you do the math, so they're pretty close to 100 years from when the first Three Stooges. They actually, when you when you look at their very very early uh, beginnings, when when they were on vaudeville uh, with Ted Healy, you know, uh, let's see, nineteen twenties. You know that may that may give them the hundred year uh, <laughs> benchmark that I'm talking about. But anyway. Their legacy lives on. I still enjoy watching them just as much as I did 50 years ago. Uh, so, you know, Larry, he's kind of the, 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 the little recognized stooge, but he really played an, an important and significant role in the success of the Three Stooges. And without him, the Three Stooges would just not... Uh, be the same uh, we could all see him getting hit in the face with a pie getting the hair pulled out of his head everybody would pick on poor little Larry and somehow he was the the uh, <laughs> like the lightning rod for Mo and Curly to help calm their nerves down and he'll he is missed uh, just as much as the other Stooges, in my mind, he was a, an integral part of their success. And uh, may he rest in peace. And thank you all for listening. I hope, I hope you uh, learned something new today about uh, Larry Fine of the Three Stooges.